Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing well. You join me today at my regular training ground, Canic Chase, and today we're gonna to go and try and get the calm on the monkey loop. Um, it's another absolute scorching day. It's 25 degrees. It's been this sunny in the UK for two weeks now, so the trails are gonna be super dusty, super loose, um, and it's just gonna be awesome fun. I'm gonna give you some commentary on the onboard footage, so let's get straight into it. All right, the course starts straight into this. Pretty brutal. 20% gradient um, for some reason the gradient data is not showing up correctly um, but there's lots of loose gravel so it's super important to um, stay seated so that you get the grip if you try and stand up you're just going to spin out and not be able to get that uh, the power down to the ground so it looks like the gradient data is caught up now so at 28% that's how steep it is to come around this corner this guy here is, here is coming so Nicely moves out of the way. So we're approaching the top of the first climb now. Um, still at 23% gradient. We've got a couple of tight switchbacks still to go. Um, this final switchback here, the exit of this switchback is really, really important. I'll just pause it there. As you can see, there's a step on the exit of this corner just by that tree, um, which requires you to give a quick burst of power to get up and over it. If you get caught, slide out and stall, or you try and get the power down whilst on it, uh, and your back wheel spins and you lose your momentum. You're gonna lose quite a lot of time because this is approaching the top of the traverse. You know, you're gonna to have to get back up to speed and you've lost speed as well across the top of the traverse. So it's probably worth five or five seconds or more. So it's really important that we get out of this corner, give it a good kick and get up and over this without any issues. Okay, so there's an important inside line coming up just here. Um, that just allows us to carry more speed into this descent. This is a super flowy trail, just taking us back down to the fire road, which we came up from. Nothing too technical. Just got to focus on maintaining decent speed around the corners and utilizing the trail features to pump and maintain that trail speed. So again, we're in another super steep climb, remaining seated to get grip. And you see we're putting out upwards of 700 watts on that climb there. Um, climb features more tight switchbacks, uh, which are full of loose gravel. So we're trying to utilize the banking on the exits of the corners in order to carry as much speed as possible and also to find some extra grip, there's some nice support in that bank, in those banking areas. So just approaching the top of that climb now, coming out into the open to traverse through the felled area. Um, again, luckily these guys see me coming and wait for me to go, which is nice of them, so drop into the open area as we're traversing across to the woods just on the other side. Unfortunately, we do get caught up behind these couple of riders. Not going too slowly, but it takes them a few minutes to realize that I'm there and get out of the way. So we lost a little bit of time, but luckily, um, and thankfully they pull over before we hit the, the next descent section, which is made up primarily of a number of S turns. So with these S-bends, we're trying to cut onto the inside of them in order to um, minimize the amount of directional changes you're taking. So if I pause here, um, you'll see that I'm nice and tight on the inside of this corner, close to the tree. Um, and if we roll forward a bit, see I'm nice and tight on the inside of the next one and the next one as well, next to that log. Um, and that just makes it as straight as possible less directional changes, no need to scrub any speed, um, so you're just maintaining as much momentum as possible.
And this continues all the way through this trail. It's made up of a number of S-bends and we're just continuously cutting at the inside in order to try and make it as straight as possible. Okay, so we're approaching the end of the trail now. There's a couple of rollers coming up here, which we pump and try and generate as much speed as possible heading onto this fire road. Fire road's about three or four minutes long. Perfect place to get the bottle out, take on board some fluids. Um, it's pretty important, particularly on this day, given the temperature, to fuel up. So heading into the next section of trail now. Uh, there's a nice sneaky inside line coming up just here, um, which is a bit of a bunny hop. And if you land correctly into the other side, you generate a nice pump and some more momentum across this traverse. So like the previous descent, on, it's made up of a number of S-bends and I'm trying to cut inside um, of the corners to make them as straight as possible. I'll pause it here. You can see we're really close to this tree um, on the inside which makes a straight line straight across. So we're inside here, we're going inside here, um, inside of the next one, and then that's just a nice straight line to carry that momentum. Okay, so we're out into the open now. This part of the trail is super loose, full of braking bumps, um, and the corners don't offer much support. They're not banked in any way, they're nice and flat. Um, so it's important to get the braking done early and not push too hard. Not really much to talk about in these woods, it's pretty one line. Um, just got to watch your bars on the trees and again try and just carry that speed through where you can. Okay, so there's a key line coming up which I actually missed to the left of the tree. Um, I take the traditional line of the trail up to the right just here um, if I took the left line that's probably worth two or three seconds you can cut straight through on the exit I cut close to this post which opens up this right hand corner and then it also allows me to pop up that ledge and over some braking bumps as well just saving energy keeping the bike planted on the ground um, to get maximum grip heading into that right hand corner okay so we're just heading back onto the main trail now after a short diversion Nothing too technical, although there are some very tight gaps on this particular part of the course that are only just wide enough for your bars, um, so you've got to be pretty accurate. I think you can see, if I pause it here, where people have caught their, their bars on the tree. So yeah, they're pretty tight. Just got to make sure you don't catch your bars as you pass through there. Okay, so a short climb now, and then we'll soon be dropping into one of my favourite parts of the monkey trail. Okay, so we've dropped in, nothing too technical to start, but we're soon going to be approaching up to a rock garden, which has quite a nasty hole in it. Okay, so I'll pause it here. If you look towards the exit of the rock garden, there's a, there's a place where one of the rocks is missing, which um, leaves a big hole. We really want to try and avoid that, because if you hit that, it's going to suck up your speed. Um, you're also at risk of puncturing. So we want to avoid that, but we want to exit on the right-hand side because we're coming into a left-hand corner. So we want to be on the right-hand side of the trail in order to open up the corner and carry as much as possible. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in on the left and then traverse diagonally across here. So we're maintaining a direction on that smooth line and we don't end up hitting any of the holes and we carry as much speed as possible. Okay, so there's nothing else too tricky on this section of trail. Um, it's just nice and flowy. There's a number of um, tight hairpins of which the exits are quite blown out. You know, so you just need to be careful that you don't push too hard and wash out the front end.
Okay, so that there's a stump just coming up that it's really important that we get to the inside, to the left hand side of. Which I'll pause so you can see the stump just there. Um, if you come in too hot, break too late, you're going to end up out on the right hand side of this stump and then you're going to be heading directly for the middle of this corner where you don't want to be because you'll lose all of your speed going around that corner. You want to be inside of this stump. So again, you're opening up this right hand corner to maintain as much speed as possible. Okay, so we're approaching the end of this trail. Um, there's one other thing that I want to discuss. I'll pause it here so we can see. As we approach the exit of the trail and we drop down onto the fire road, there's um, a stump where they felled a tree. Uh, the main trail goes to the right and that is the direction that I actually take. But having reviewed the footage, I think we could have saved a couple of seconds if we had bunny hopped over this. So if we took this line straight, bunny hopped over the stump onto the fire road. Uh, effectively taking a straight line would have carried more momentum and then we would have also opened up the right hand corner afterwards which does lead into a bit of a hill so again the more momentum we carried around that corner is worth valuable time Okay, so we're 19 or so minutes in and we're on the penultimate climb now. Pretty similar to previous climbs, just features some tight hairpins, um, really loose surface again, so just got to remain seated for grip, as I've said before. Um, we do catch some guys up in a little bit, but they, uh, they get off the trail, they move out quickly and let us through, which is good. Okay, so at the top of the trail now. Um, again, these chaps see me coming, so they let me drop in first. Um, so this trail starts off super narrow through these woods um, as we yeah we go through these trees. Basically, you've just got to um, to watch your bar ends in a couple of sections. You don't you don't want to push too hard through here. Um, I think you've just got to focus on maintaining some decent trail speed. You don't want to be coming in hot, braking and then accelerating. You just want to keep the flow. Okay, so we're out of the trees now. Um, we head across the broad walk and things start to open up a little bit. We've got a couple of narrow trees coming up. So here, just coming through here. Um, again, they're only just wide enough. You can see where people have caught their handlebars. So it's really important that we carry as much speed as possible through this section because we're coming um, onto a relatively flat section. It's actually slightly uphill to start and then flat traverses across the top of the hill. Um, the more speed you carry through here, you'll carry that speed all the way across the traverse. So you could make up a number of seconds, three, four, five seconds quite easily and also save energy because you're not having to accelerate out of this if you carry your speed through. Okay, so we're coming into um, another tight corner, tight left-hand corner. Big braking bumps coming in, so we're doing our braking early. Um, but also prior to this, I clicked down a couple of gears because it's got an uphill exit. So I clicked down to the right gear to make sure that we were in the right gear for powering out the corner. So we're going to come around this right hand bend and then on the exit I'm going to take an inside corner or pause inside of this stump. So basically this corner, this left hand corner is pretty flat and it's really gravelly because it actually merges with another trail. So there's a lot of gravel there and it's flat. You don't want to be cornering on the flat, um, particularly with loads of gravel because um, you're at risk of washing out. So we're going to cut inside of this stump on the left. Um, and then cut straight across and utilize the banking on the exit where we get that extra support allows us to carry a lot of speed uh, minimizes the risk of crashing and washing out
Okay, so this corner here is actually really tricky. The entrance coming in is blind as you head over that rock garden. You can't see what's going to be happening in this corner, but it's got big braking bumps on the way in. It's got a tree in the middle of the course, um, and we want to end up on the right hand side of that. If you come in too much speed um, and hit these braking, you won't be able to brake through these braking bumps without crashing because they are extremely deep. Um, you're going to end up on the left hand side of that tree in the sand and that's just going to ruin your whole lap. So it's important to come in with the right amount of speed, get your braking done early as I mentioned before, stick right on the inside so that you end up being able to get to the right hand side of this tree and carry your momentum through. It probably highlights the importance of knowing the trail or having ridden the trail before. Um, if you're coming into that blind and didn't know it was there, I almost guarantee that you'd end up to the left hand side of that tree. Okay, we're approaching the end of the trail now. Um, I'm going to be taking an inside line here um, and then get right up on the banking on the left in order to open up this right hand corner, carry the speed towards the end of the trail and then out onto the fire road. Okay, so get through this style and then we're about to hit the the final climb um, so a lot of the hard work's done now we've just got a final push um, up this relatively steep section um, again we're going to be pushing up with these 700 watts as we progress up this first part of the climb a couple of tight switchbacks very similar to all the other climbs that we've discussed um, probably soon going to be popping out at the top. Okay, so we've reached the top of the hill. Um, luckily we get to drop in with a clear run. Um, the course starts with a couple of big rollers which we're gonna pump to make sure that we generate as much speed as possible. And then this right hand corner coming up, we're gonna be sticking to the inside because there's actually another course that peels off. Right here, you can see that it peels off to the left just in front of that uh, bollard. Um, if you get caught out there on the left hand side, you're at great risk of washing out or you're gonna get pushed off left and miss the turn completely. So we're sticking on the right hand side above that rut. And then as you go off this fly off, we're sticking to the right hand side because again, there's big braking bumps on the landing. So we jump to the right um, in order to avoid those. We've got a tight left hand corner coming up. Um, so we're clicking, again, we click down a few gears beforehand to make sure we're in the right gear for exit. Some nice, super flowy S-Bends. Real key to carry the speed around these because there's a jump just coming up here. So you've got to carry that speed to the S-Bends in order to hit that. Um, if you don't hit that jump, it's probably worth two or three seconds again. And all these, you know, every time we talk about a particular section, it's only two or three seconds. It might not sound much at the time, but if you're doing that sort of 10, in 10 areas across the course, you know, that's 20 to 30 seconds a lap. Um, and when you're racing, you're probably doing this five or six times. Um, you know, that's a lot of time. Okay, so we're coming up to another feature I want to discuss. We come round this corner and then I'll pause it so we can talk about it. There's some rollers, there's a couple of rollers here. Uh, one here and one here. Most people will just use them as fly-offs, so they'll fly off the first one and they'll fly off the second one. What I do is I pump the first one and then I'll pre-hop over the second one in order to get my wheels back down onto the ground because basically that roller leads right into um, a right-hand and left-hand corner sequence. Um, so I'll pre-hop it, get my wheels onto the ground so I'm getting grip. I can lean into the corners, get my braking done as soon as possible. If you fly off, I'll give pause, you know, you're at, very, at a very high risk of going into this soft sand um, and gravel on the left-hand side, or even worse, missing the corner completely, 
missing your braking points, missing your turning points and ending up in that fern. So we do a pre-hop, get the wheels down on the ground as early as possible, end up high here on the right and it also opens up the, the entry onto this left hand corner that we've just been through. Okay, a few final bends, then we're almost at the finish. So come to the final corner here, you just want to watch your braking point. There's big braking bumps. If you lose, if you leave your braking too late, um, you're going to overshoot that. Okay, over the bridge. Around the final corner, and there we have it lap complete um, the segment actually finishes the other side of this style and down the fire road for some reason um, so I actually lost 30 or 40 seconds on my time as I dawdled all through this um, not realising that the segment finished further down but we did the whole loop in 29 minutes and 12 seconds and we took the com by just over a minute so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video you found my commentary and insight useful if you've got any questions or anything you want to see in the next video get them down in the comments don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one thanks for watching